Okay, so differentiating parametric functions. Now, again, we're going to be applying the chain rule for these ones, but in a, a quite a different way. So remember, a parametric function is basically a function of y and x that are made up by a third variable, in most cases, which we call t. Okay, so in a lot of cases, we'd say, okay, well, x is equal to, you know, 2t and y is equal to t squared. Now, this is quite different to what we normally would have. What we would normally have is y is equal to, you know, some function of x, okay, like this. And what we would do is we'd say, okay, well, let u be equal to 3x plus 2, and then that way y can be some function of u. But what you'll notice up here is we've actually got y is equal to some function of t already, and then we've got x is equal to some function of t. So if I was to differentiate this y here, I'd write dy dt, okay, because we're differentiating this y value with t's in it, okay? So that's why the y is on the top and the t is on the bottom. So this would be 2t. And if I wanted to do x, it would be dx dt, because I've got the x by itself, I'm trying to differentiate that function value that's involving t's. So in this case, this one would be 2. The problem is, though, with our chain rule is we have dy dx, okay? And in this case, with the t's, it'd be dy dt times dt dx. And you'll notice that our dt dx is the wrong way around. We actually need to get the dx dt. DT. Um, before we can differentiate a function that looks like this, okay? So the way we're going to do it is we're actually going to essentially split, oh, it's not split, we're going to uh, flip the dt dx. So what we're going to get is we're going to get dy dt divided by dx dt because that way we can then differentiate both this y value and this x value, okay? And then get a value for dy dx. So we'll have a look at doing that in an example. But remembering that a parametrization are like, it's it's two variables that are related by a third one. So y and x are related in some way. And the way that they're related is by the third variable t, okay? So let's have a look at an example of how to do these parametrizations. So in this example, example, we have got, I want to get rid of that box because it's annoying me. Okay. We've got a curve is defined parametri parametrically as X is equal to T squared and Y is equal to 4T. So that is, if I draw a curve, so whatever this curve may look like, okay, maybe it looks like this. Okay. Every single point on this curve can be made up of X is equal to T squared and Y is equal to 4T, okay? So that is each of these individual points are made up of one of, uh, made up of those two equations. So if T was equal to three, okay, then we get the point nine, 12, okay? So that's what it means. So let's differentiate or find the derivative at the point t squared 4t. Now remember, t squared 4t is any of the points that are on this function, okay? So let's do this specific one. So the curve is defined parametrically by that. Let's find the derivative of that. So we've got x is equal to t squared, and we got y is equal to 4t. Now what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate the x with respect to t, and we're going to differentiate this y with respect to t as well. Okay, so we've got t squared, so the derivative of that is 2t, and we've got 4t, so the derivative of that is 4. Now, to differentiate them together, we're going to apply that chain rule, that the new chain rule that we've got, and that is dy dx is equal to uh, dy dt divided by dt dx, uh, sorry, other way around, dx dt. Or the other way of writing that is dy dt over dx dt, okay, like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute our values in. So dy dt in this case is equal to four. So we're gonna get four divided by two t. Okay, and that's it. So our dy dx is just equal to four divided by two t. Well, that's just two over t. And so that is our derivative of the function that can be defined parametrically as uh, the points uh, t squared and 4t. Now, part B says to find the equation, okay? 
So when we're going to find the equation, we're going to use our, uh, our gradient form, our point gradient form, I should say. And we know what one of the points are. So we know that the point at the, ta at the tangent is t squared 4t, okay? And we know that m, so the derivative at that point is t, 2 over t. So what we can do is we can substitute these points into this equation over here. So we get y minus, okay, it's gonna be 4t in this case, is equal to two over t, lots of x minus, and x1 is t squared. Now we're going to expand out and simplify to so just to make it a bit easier in the long run. Okay, so we're gonna get two x over t minus, now it's t squared divided by t, so that's just t. Okay, t, uh, whoops, sorry, it's two lots of that because it's two over t times t squared, so it's minus two t. Now I'm gonna get the y by itself, I'm gonna get y is equal to two x over t, and it's going to be adding 4t to both sides, that's gonna be plus 2t there. Okay, and so that is the equation of that uh, line in point gradient form. Okay, now our next part of the question is to find the x-intercept a at the tangent at t. So this is the equation of our tangent, so what we need to do is to find the x intercept, so to find the x-intercept, let y be equal to zero. Okay, so we get zero is equal to two x over t plus two t. Okay, quite straightforward. So all we're going to do is rearrange this to find x and that's going to give us the point where our x-intercept is. So minus two t is equal to two x on t. Take the t across, we're gonna get minus t squared is equal to two x and then divide both sides by two. We're gonna get x is equal to minus t squared. Okay, so over here, therefore, the x-intercept is at uh, minus two, oops, sorry, is at, and we're gonna do the point. So the x is minus t squared and the y is zero because it's the x-intercept. So that is our x-intercept, okay? Part, C, uh, part D is to find the midpoint of a and t. So a, is that x-intercept we just found, and t is the point that we used just before, okay? So what we're going to do, just quickly, is going to find, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what a is and what t is, just to remind myself. So t is that point from above, so t squared and 4t, and a, I'm not going to do equals, and a is my x-intercept, which is just there, so it's minus t squared, zero. Now the midpoint, so remembering the midpoint formula is x2 minus x1 over two, oh sorry, plus x1, and it's going to be y2 plus y1 over two. Okay, so the midpoint, so let's call this one x2, x1, oh sorry, x2, y2, and this one can be x1, y1. So substitute these points in, we're gonna get minus t squared plus t squared over two, okay? And we're gonna get, uh, so zero plus four t over zero, uh, not over zero, kind of over zero, over two, okay? So in this case, minus t plus t is just zero, so it's gonna be zero over two, which is just zero, and then four t divided by two, well, that's just two t. And so our midpoint then is equal to zero comma two t. Okay, now the last step of this problem is to eliminate t to show that the curve is y squared is equal to 16x. Okay, so we're basically going to get those beginning equations that we started off with, though, where the x is equal to t squared and y is equal to 4t. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange one of them and substitute it into the other. Um, I like this one better, y over four is equal to t. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sub t is equal to y over four into uh, x is equal to t squared. And once we do that, we've eliminated t. So doing so, we're gonna get x is equal to y over four or squared. Okay, so x is equal to y squared over 16. Multiply both sides by 16, we get 16x is equal to y squared, or that y squared is equal to 16x. Okay, and that's our final answer. The one that we're required to get to. 
So with that being said, that is the end of the parametrization. Uh, and the last little video for this section is going to be looking at the differentiation of inverse functions. So again, uh, not too bad, um, but we need to have a look at it so we can make sure that we can do it for um, ourselves. So last video coming up next. Um, I don't have anything else I really need to say about this. I think just remember that the parametrizations are uh, probably one of the trickier things. Okay, it is a purely extension topic from memory. So make sure you've done the parametric equation stuff before you actually attempt doing the parametric equation differentiation. Okay, make a lot more sense once you've done it.